Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And we are here for a short little video to basically um, talk about the interview that aired last night with um, Steve Greenberg, who is um, Robert's attorney. And he was on a platform called FMP Radio Chicago. And so, you know, of course, people found out that um, Steve Greenberg was talking, and so they rushed over, you know, to hear what he had to say. And it wasn't a long interview, it was a little short interview, probably about 16 minutes long. And so he really wasn't saying much of anything that we haven't already talked about on the different channels that's covering this story, that basically, um, you know, COVID has pretty much shut the court system down. They're still trying um, to get him bail. You know, they're preparing for the upcoming case, even though he doesn't think that it will be possible for that case to move forward at this point, you know, because it's two months away. And so I was just like, okay, you know, this is cool. He found somebody to interview him or he reached out to somebody. And I say that because for me, the interview took a wide left. And if you guys follow my channel, you know when it comes to those, um, I call them the fake R. Kelly sisters. I just have zero tolerance when it comes to that. Um, I don't believe that they are his sisters. I know a lot of people say it doesn't matter. Um, for me, it does matter because we're covering a case where we're accusing other people of lying on this man, lying about their relationships with him, lying about how they met him, lying about what transpired while they worked for him. So you can't, on one hand, be outraged that somebody is telling false, you know, false stories and making stuff up. And then on the other hand say, oh, well, if this person is lying, it doesn't matter. It really don't go that way. And for me, I just, I don't know, just when it comes to deceit and deception, I just have zero tolerance for it. And so that's why I don't, you know, jump on the sister's bandwagon. Um, in my opinion, they're not his biological sisters. They're not his real sisters. They just met this man, you know, regardless of the stories that they tell about, you know, growing up thinking he was their cousin and all of this other crap. I'm not falling for it, uh, mainly because when Dr. Rice unfolded that they were not his biological sisters, he actually used information that he got from his biological family saying that these people are not related, their father is not related. And then in the precedence um, documentary um, where they were on there, which I didn't understand why they were on there, but they were, I noticed things like, when they talked about their father, if you notice, the only picture that they ever show is that one picture of this man who you know kind of resembles um, R. Kelly, okay? And that picture could have came from anywhere. They could have did like a comparison photo, like they have these apps um, where you can put in a person's picture and then it'll search the internet for pictures, um, you know, based on face recognition technology, pull up a picture that resembles that person. It happens a lot, like when you're loading pictures on Facebook and then it'll start tagging people that you're friends with because they think that based on this face recognition technology that these people are the people in your picture when you know that it's not. So um, for them to just keep showing that one picture and then that docu-series, where they are going, um, talking about their family history and everything. They didn't have pictures of their family, of their own family, or pictures with their father or anything. Those were stock images for the most part that he, that Shabazz used in the docu-series. So um, them being in the docu-series didn't convince me that they were the sisters, okay? Um, it just didn't add up because I'm thinking, 
if you know I can show you pictures of my dad, pictures of my mom and dad together, pictures of all you know my siblings and I with my dad. Um, I know people whose um, father, you know, they didn't grow up in the same home with their father, but they still have pictures. You know, there's still pictures of the mother and the father together before they parted ways, um, maybe even before um, the kids were even conceived. So the fact that we only have that one picture, you know, kind of is another red flag for me. But anyway, if you guys remember, if you follow um, Dabowski Gunn, he actually interviewed Don Russell. And in that interview, you know, um, Dabowski brings up, you know, the, the sisters. And he um, cut, Don was responding and Dabowski talked over him. But if you go back and look at that video, um, Don very clearly says, those are not Robert's sisters but they serve a purpose. Now, you know, some people don't believe Don, some people believe Don, I believe, I haven't figured Don's purpose out yet, but I do know that some of the stuff he's saying is, you know, it's very true. Some of the other stuff is sketchy. Um, some of the stuff may even be false, but there are just certain things that he says, the way he says it, when he says it, you know, lets me know that there's some validity to it. And so when he said, those are not his sisters, but they serve a purpose, I took note to that. And so when Greenberg, um, when they came into the conversation um, last night, Greenberg, <laughs> the, one of the guys asked Greenberg, one of the interviewers, you know, say, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of speculation about um, the two ladies that say that they're R. Kelly's sisters. Um, you know, are they the sisters? Can we, you know, put it to the rest or what, put it to rest or whatever. And then Greenberg piped up, oh, yes, definitely. Those are his sisters, you know, and they are a help. And so I was like, hold up, wait a minute. First of all, why would they, these people are interviewing him about R. Kelly, right? What interviewer is going to bring up some YouTube mess, okay, about some, some sisters going around pretending, you know, that they are R. Kelly's sister and then just make it seem like it's such a, a important issue, okay? It's like stuff that we talk about on uh, social media, but it's not a pressing issue. It's not a pressing issue in terms of his case for real, for real, these charges that he's facing, um, discovery that has been um, given out, like where do they stand? We got the Northern District case of Illinois, which these guys claim that they are from Chicago. We got the Northern District of, District of Illinois where the judge ordered the, the prosecutors to present the exact dates, the exact names of these witnesses, the exact um, information about what actually went down. And they were supposed to do that by June um, 22nd, but then like on June 20, I mean on June 18th, they submitted a response basically saying what they've been saying all along and then going forward and saying, oh, you know, we're still working with the Eastern District of New York to gather more information, but at no point did they give the judge the names, did they give the judge the dates, did they give the judge the exact allegations. And I looked to see, I said, okay, well, maybe that information was under seal, but there was no additional document. You know, so even if something is under seal, it'll still be posted on the website, but you can't click on it. You can't open it up and see what it is. So none of that happened. Now that would have been a good question to ask Steve Greenberg, like what's going on with the Northern District of Illinois? Why didn't they respond to Judge Led Weber or Led Better or whatever his name is? Why didn't they respond? And what are you guys going to do, you know, to get that information? But no, they're asking about these sisters. So that was a red flag to me. And so it got me to thinking, hmm, where do these guys come from? <laughs> okay, so first of all, this um, channel where this interview was done was created on July 22nd, just a couple of days ago, um, before Steve posted, you know, on, I think he posted on Twitter that he was doing this interview. 
he, there was zero subscribers on this channel. So I went to look to see, okay, well maybe they have a bigger platform. Um, couldn't find anything on YouTube. Um, somebody in the comments did ask about them have playing um, R. Kelly's music. And they told them, oh, we do play his music, check out our app, but they didn't give a link to the app. I don't believe there was a link to the app. But anyway, so I was like, okay, so did they reach out to Steve about doing this interview or did Steve reach out to them and say, hey, I need to do this interview because I need to promote this sister narrative because what he said after he said that those are um, Robert's sisters is he went on to say that they have a defense fund going on and he was saying that, um, I think one of the guys might have asked him about a defense fund and he said, um, you know, there's different funds and people, you know, are concerned about the funds. And I'm not quoting here, I'm just giving you guys the gist of what he said. That um, people were concerned about the funds, but these sisters, they got a fund that they done started. And this is a fund that, you know, we can reach out and touch and, you know, support this fund. And that the fund isn't going to be to pay the lawyers, the fund is going to be to pay for um, specialists. So I'm like, okay, um, trial is supposed to start in September. They're going to start jury selection on September 14th. That's less than two months away. You mean to tell me you haven't hired any specialists, any forensics people? You haven't hired any social media people to be scouring these social media accounts, um, pulling up this bike information, all this stuff that R. Kelly supporters have been doing? You don't have any specialists on hand? Uh, it, you're just now trying to hire specialists? <laughs> like, what have you been doing? This man has been locked up since July of last year. He has been in jail for over a year. And here you are on this fake interview talking about supporting these fake sisters and their defense fund to pay for specialists. And then I'm thinking, and in Chicago, I don't even think attorneys can do crowdfunding for, like maybe they can't do crowdfunding for themselves to get paid. So maybe this is his way around getting money and doing crowdfunding is to say it's the higher specialist. But at this point, I am just like, what in the heck is going on, <laughs> okay? And so to me, after just going back, seeing that this was a brand new YouTube um, account, that there were no subscribers until um, Steve said he was doing this interview. Then one other thing that he said that caught my attention, he said, last night I was working with the attorneys to prepare the motion for his appeal to the Second Circuit. Um, the initial appeal to the Second Circuit was entered on... January, um, not January, on July 2nd, maybe, like around July 2nd or July 3rd. I think I did my video about it on July. I did mine the night of July 3rd, but I posted it on the 4th, I believe. So I think it was loaded into the PACER system on the 2nd. So he's saying, last night we were working on this. And so I said, okay, well, it was either the original appeal or it was the rebuttal and the rebuttal um, I think was like the 17th or the 18th. So either way, some time has passed. So when exactly did Steve Greenberg do this interview? Okay, so now I'm just like, really, what is going on here? And then I got to thinking back to when that phone call was circulating where it was supposed to be um, Robert on the phone, talking to Jocelyn, telling Jocelyn, tell my fans, these are my sisters, um, you know, to support them, you know, to listen to them. And then remember Sharon, you know, was like, are y'all crazy? He can't be telling people to record phone conversations. Y'all remember all that? If not, go back to Sharon Wimbush's page where she's talking about like, this makes no sense that he would be 
on a federal phone in a federal prison telling his girlfriend to record this conversation like he has bigger things to worry about than whether or not his fans believe that these women are really his sisters. And so I don't know if the recording is real or not. Um, I did go back and ask my brother-in-law because he has a brother who is in a federal prison. And I asked him, I said, well, is there a recording? I said, because I can't remember if there is a interruption. I know when you answer the phone, it says that this call originated from a federal prison or for a state, from a state prison. I said, but I don't remember an interruption throughout the call. And then he said that he know that there's a recording at the beginning of the call, but him and his brother pretty much email each other for the most part. He said, but if he, you know, if I talk to him on the phone again soon, I'll let you know. You know, I'll be sure to listen for it. He said, but you know, after a while, you forget, you know, you kind of tune that kind of stuff out. So there could be an interruption. So I'm not sure whether the call was authentic or the call was not authentic, but it was in the middle of June. Okay, so now I'm thinking, so that call came out in June. People were debunking it. Some people were believing it. And then the second circuit appeal was filed like two weeks later. So, was this whole interview a setup like to like was Steve Greenberg behind that phone call being released him um allegedly making this phone call telling the fans to support these ladies and whatever they're doing and then people saying they didn't believe that that was you know him on the phone and so now he has to come up with another way to get the people to believe these women so that for the purpose of donating to this defense fund that they've created, which would be in line with what Don Russell said, those are not his sisters, but they serve a purpose. So it's the purpose now that the money for Greenberg has run out or is running low. And so now they've got to figure out a way, finagle a way to get some money flowing. And the way to do this is to push this narrative that, yeah, these are his sisters. I don't know why people don't believe that those are his sisters, but hey, um, that defense, out of all the defense funds, this is the one that is legit. And this is the one, you know, people need to support because we're gonna need specialists, you know, we're gonna need this and that. And I'm just like, if my, if I have been sitting in jail for over a year and my attorney comes up six weeks before jury selection starts on my case, um, two months before my case actually is set to start, and indicating that he hasn't hired any specialists to review this discovery, review this information, I would be highly, highly pissed. Now, keep in mind, these are just my thoughts, okay? This is me looking at this situation from a totally different angle, not looking at it as, oh, I'm so happy that Steve Greenberg got on, on um, YouTube and talked about the case and pretty much said the same thing that he always says. But this is me saying, why in the world would these people ask, Green ask Greenberg about these sisters and why did he pipe up and was so excited to say, yeah, those really are his sisters. To me, it just seemed so contrived. Like maybe he wrote the script because remember, one of the guys walk around and give the guy who's talking a piece of paper to ask Greenberg a question as if to say, you know, you forgot to ask this question. We were supposed to ask this question. And then the guy, um, the question was about bail. And he was like, um, is something about bail or mail? Like, is he getting bail or mail? And then Greenberg was like, oh, bail, bail. Um, you know, we're still working on that. And so I was just like, <laughs> Oh my God, this is just unreal. So now I'm starting to wonder, um, has Greenberg not seen um, Robert because of the COVID problem or has he not seen him because the money drying up and he ain't going down there um, unsure if he's gonna get paid or not. Whatever the situation is, it is just really 
I don't know, it's just got me looking at this whole situation a uh, whole different way. I mean, so much craziness is going on around this case that this is just one more thing to throw in the pot. And then the last thing he said before the interview ended, he was, something came up about the protests and he kind of, like I didn't really get the gist of what he was trying to say, but then today, he posted the following on Twitter. Where, you know, he's basically like, people have the right to, you know, protest if that's what they want to do. You know, he doesn't have to agree with it or support it. And then he started talking about people throwing things. And so I was like, okay, that's twice. So my impression that I'm getting from the tweet and from what he was mumbling at the end of that interview was that he was somewhat embarrassed by the protest, the march that took place last weekend and that he doesn't really support future marches that are about to take place. Now that's how I took it. You guys might have taken it a different way. So I just want to jump on and just share my thoughts about that whole interview and how my radar went up when he started talking about those sisters and about that defense fund. And so I already, you know, I was trying to give Greenberg the benefit of the doubt to say, you know, I'm no lawyer. He might be a very good lawyer. He may be a strategic lawyer. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe he is. And he's going to surprise us in the end. But then after that interview last night, I was just like, Lord, we got to pray for our brother, Mr. Kelly. We got to pray for Hail Mary. We got to pray for divine intervention if he is going to get out of this because if this is his representation in the Illinois cases, he might be in a little bit of trouble. So guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think. Um, leave your comments below, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.